All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about my two truck survival knives. And these two are the knives that I have in my truck specifically relegated and dedicated to survival tasks. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first one, as I've talked about much and gets much high praise on this channel, arguably um, from some people that don't like it, is the much beloved Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. Now this has been my go-to truck survival knife for a very long time, actually many years now. And predominantly the reason why is it's because it is a knife that I feel very competent, very capable, and have honestly done a lot of personal survival training with. This is a blade, this is a blade that I feel I can do just about any task, whether it's bushcrafting related, wilderness related, even tactical related tasks, this blade is going to be able to handle them. And not only is it going to be able to handle them, it really excels. It has a really nice hollow ground blade, which some people report issues. I've never personally had an issue with the hollow grind on this guy. It's also made out of, mine is made out of the older S35 VN steel, which makes it very corrosion resistant, which I do really enjoy because you, it's a really nice knife that you can just, you know, forget about or set and forget and just not worry about it rusting up on you. So that steel really is very helpful for that reason. But in addition to that, like I said, ergonomically, it is extremely squared away. Very easy to choke up on the blade and get really precise cuts at the edge. And at the same time, too, you can choke back, even pushing it back a little bit further where there is a very nice flare at the handle to kind of lock your hand in for light chopping tasks. Now, once again, when it comes to chopping with a knife, with a knife, I'm not really going to be doing that. That's not the main focus, and that's why I have a dedicated and that's why I have a dedicated axe in my truck is so that I can actually chop things up because we all know that knives can work in a pinch but are simply just not the best. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, chop down a tree with this knife. It's just not realistically possible. Now, in addition to this, I have this guy set up with a few other things. I do have a ferro rod attached to this with a very brightly colored lanyard so I can take this off, use it as I need. In addition to that too, I also have a really capable multi-tool, the Leatherman Surge in this pouch here. So overall, this is an extremely capable tool. It is a little bit redundant with the blades of the Leatherman, but the Leatherman Surge offers a number of really nice and handy tools that make this an overall very well-rounded kit for being a cutting option. Now, the next one for me is a little bit scaled back and primarily serves as a redundancy to the Pacific. The Pacific is my go-to for sure, but this is an Allegheny Bush er, an Allegheny Knives Bushcrafter. Now, a lot of people might be wondering who the heck is Allegheny Knives and what the heck is this knife? Because you've probably never seen it. I do have it. I've had it for a long time, like I think four or five years. And it just kind of sits around, lives its life, once again, primarily in the truck. And Allegheny Knife Works, I think, was really cool. It was a custom maker um, based out of the lower 48 uh, in a town named Allegheny, obviously, and I'm kind of blanking on which state it was in at the moment. But anyways, he was nice enough to work with me. We collaborated on uh, some different knife projects, primarily the Bushcrafter, and um, we did like two different versions. There was the V1, which was all tan, and I since no longer have that knife, but I do have the V2, which is this guy right here. Now, it's made out of 01 tool steel. It has a light coating. I'm not sure what the coating is on it, but it does uh, show a lot of wear, and so it's not the best of coatings, but I will say the G10 handle itself is very comfy. The steel itself is very good. I actually recently kind of redid the edge, not to the best of my abilities, unfortunately, on the edge or on the wicked edge um, it does not like scandy grinds as much as I was hoping but this thing does have a very very nice edge on it now and it is super super sharp so it is a good edge on it um, like I said it is 01 tool steel so it takes a fine edge really fast and very easily but uh, yeah and this is an H yeah an eighth of an inch thick so it is reasonably thin um, but overall it's a really nice knife and super comfy it is one of those types of knives that you could hold honestly 
four hours and I kind of like it because it's one of those blades that you know you really can't find it is from a maker that no longer makes knives but this knife was made very well um, it's not my favorite blade design because it is designed after the Kephart style if you guys couldn't already tell it's very much of a Kephart style blade with this um, almost leaf shaped blade but the disadvantage to the cap parts is that they do not have a very good penetrating tip so you can't really you know like poke with this tip um, it is on one side very nice because it is very robust and very overbuilt so it's very hard to break the tip on this blade but it is not the type of tip for like skinning game animals and stuff just because it is extremely rounded so anyways that that's probably the biggest thing i dislike about this knife but it's really just a cap heart style blade so if you want a cap heart you just kind of have to live with that but aside from that it is a really nice knife and the ergonomics on the handle are just so squared away it's probably my favorite thing about the v2 as opposed to the v1 of these guys is that they just had super squared away ergonomics but Anyways, like I said, Allegheny Knives no longer makes knives, unfortunately, so this guy is kind of uh, unobtainable, but it is very nice. And once again, it's not like the best of best knives out there. This was made by a guy who was reasonably new at knife making, so it wasn't necessarily, you know, crazy, crazy, you know, amazing, um, but it is still a really quality piece. And once again, definitely worthy of, you know, living in the truck. And I've certainly, both the V1 and the V2, have seen a lot of you and abuse and lastly i'll say it is in this um kydex sheath and the kydex sheath was originally set up to be mounted like horizontal or sorry vertically but i set it up with some paracord on the back to be ran scout style so you can kind of run your belt loop through here and through here if you have a small enough belt loop but primarily through this kind of x shape and it locks in pretty well scout style or um, horizontally so that's how i ended up carrying it most of the time and then of course i have a little bit of extra tail on this weave pattern so you have a little bit of extra paracord for survival purposes if you need it so that is kind of my setup for both of them um but very much survival oriented knives and really cool blades figured i would showcase them because i don't really talk a lot specifically about my truck based survival knives anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out Thank you.